topic today that is uh, magnetism okay so uh, let's see the basic first what is magnetic field okay or what concepts or what uh, basic things you know about magnet okay, have you seen a magnet any time earlier no you have not, not seen this i've seen on the book okay okay so uh, do you know at least the basics that a magnet always have two poles a north pole and a south pole that you yes. know in order to study magnetism we need to see the basics of what is magnet or what is a magnetic field okay how it is generated and how is it different from the others okay so first talking about magnetic fields now magnet creates a magnetic field around it so wherever you place a magnet okay even if a small magnet even if you divide a bigger magnet into smaller parts any magnet will always have two poles which one is south pole and the other is a north pole okay and due to this poles there is a field that is generated around the magnet around any magnet okay so around any magnet there is a field that is being generated due to the magnetic forces that field is known as magnetic field you cannot see a magnetic field but you can observe its effect okay so obviously it's not a visible force okay but you can demonstrate whether the magnetic field is present or not by different effect by observing its different effect okay when you place a magnet on a table you cannot see its magnetic field or magnetic force yes but you can observe its effect on different things okay so that we'll be studying here okay, what are the different methods or what are the different effects you can observe okay so uh, the force is exerted on the magnetic material brought into a magnetic field okay so if you want to observe the magnetic field okay its effect you need to bring about something within that field within that area that is present around the magnet so we know that there is something which is known as a magnetic field which is a force of attraction so you cannot see this force around the magnet so to observe that you have to do certain experiments okay on experiments small activities you can see okay so when you bring about certain metallic things in the uh, in the magnetic field you will see different changes okay so if you want to observe this changes you need to do certain things the force is a non contact force because the magnet and the material do not have to touch each other okay so when you bring about a metallic uh, thing near to a magnet okay it uh, there's no need that the mag uh, the met metal should touch the magnet even if it comes near to the magnet you will observe different changes okay what changes you'll observe is that when you bring any metallic product into the magnetic field that product gets stick with the magnet it will get stuck on the magnet okay so whether it is not necessary you will uh, 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 bring that closer even if it comes near to the magnet you will observe this effect are you understanding asher yeah yes okay so when you bring uh, when uh, if you want to observe this effect you can take a uh, example of an iron nail okay so when you bring this iron nail near to the magnet in the field uh, in the magnetic field of that magnet you will see a different changes what changes you will see is that particular magnetic nail will stick to the magnet okay so the force need not be contact okay it could be contactless force also okay so it is not necessary you should bring that so close that it should stick to the magnet not necessary even if you bring that to the vicinity of the magnetic field you will observe the change okay so it's not necessary that you have to touch that uh, uh, iron nail to the magnet even if you bring near to the magnet you will observe the changes what change you will observe that iron nail will stick to the magnet is that clear yes yes so let's see the next part so magnetic materials includes metal like iron steel nickel and cobalt so i told you most of the metallic metals okay get attracted towards this magnet or can show a different effect when it comes within the magnetic field 
okay so examples of this metals are iron so you can observe the change when you bring closer iron towards the uh, magnet when you bring steel any steel product close to the magnet you will observe changes when you bring nickel towards the magnet still you will observe the change and cobalt also so these are some of the examples of the metal which when brought in the vicinity of the magnetic field will observe different changes you will probably have to use a magnet to attract paper clips now we know what are paper clips which are used to bring together the uh, papers okay so it is shown in the diagram also so that paper clips are probably made of steel okay so when you bring that closer to the magnet it sticks to the magnet as shown in the picture okay so when you bring the magnet clo closer to the paper clips it attracts the paper clips and that's the reason why the paper clip sticks to the magnet a magnet have two poles we have seen there are two poles of the magnet one is north pole and one is south pole okay so the now north pole is denoted as n capital n okay and the south pole is denoted as capital s okay so every magnet has two parts always towards the left is the south pole and towards the right is the north pole they are shown with the letters n and s as we can see in the diagram okay when a paper clip is close to one of the poles of the magnet the paper clip will be attracted to the towards the magnet so these we have seen i told you the uh, paper clip is made up of metal okay and when it comes closer to any magnet in the vicinity of the magnetic field it will get attracted towards the magnet it could be any pole it could be south pole or it could be north pole but it will show this different changes clear till here yeah okay so as you move the paper clip further away it stops being attracted okay now every magnet has its own you can say area or a magnetic field or vicinity okay so when you uh, move the uh, paper clip farther farther from the magnet you can see the force becoming lesser and lesser okay so once it is away from the magnetic field it will no more attract okay so there is a particular magnetic field there is a distance or you can say there is a area where there is a magnetic field okay so if the magnet is here in the previous diagram you can see okay so there is a field so for example this is the field where if you bring about any metal part near to this area it will get attracted after this part when you uh, when you move the uh, metallic uh, part or metallic clip for farther from the magnet it will no more get attracted okay so there is a particular area which is known as magnetic field okay when you bring closer to that field it will get attracted and when you uh, move farther from that particular field it will move farther and it stops being attracted okay the paper clip is attracted to a magnet when it is in the magnetic field of the magnet so as i told you earlier that every magnet has its own magnetic field when the any metal comes in contact in that particular area only then you will observe the fo force of attraction when you move away from that particular magnetic field the paper clip or any other metal will not get attracted okay so that particular field is known as the magnetic field a magnetic field is the area around the magnet where the effect of the magnet can be detected fine okay so magnetic field is nothing but a particular area okay so there are different types of magnet around any type of magnet there is a particular field which is known as a magnetic field okay and this magnetic field helps to observe different effect okay and this effect can be detected by a magnet a magnetic field surrounds all the magnets so whichever magnet it is any magnet will have its own area which is known as magnetic field fine clear till here yeah okay the magnetic field of a magnet is the strongest at the poles so as we have seen this is a oh, this is a bar of magnet okay so it's a bar magnet so towards the whole bar there are two poles two ends okay so the magnetic field is the strongest towards the ends 
okay so uh, at the middle also the paper clip will stick but towards the pole the magnetic field is the most strongest so if you take a whole bunch of pins clips or uh, you know uh, steel clips towards the magnet the more you will observe towards the poles okay most of the clips will stick to the north pole or the south pole okay because the force is stronger at the end that is towards the pole okay so magnetic field around a uh, magnet where the effect is uh, can be detected and the magnetic field of a magnet is strongest at the poles okay so when we talk about the magnet the poles of the magnet that is the north pole and the south pole are the strongest okay and most of the things attracts onto these two poles okay let's move to the next part you can see the paper clip is outside the magnetic field of this magnet so it will not be attracted okay so the magnet is here i told you there is there is a certain area around the magnet which will uh, when you bring about any metallic part onto this field only then it will get attracted now if you see this paper clip this paper clip is away from the magnet and obviously if it is away from the magnet it is away from the magnetic field also and that is the reason why it is not attracted towards the magnet it is very far away from the magnet okay because at this point the magnetic field is not reaching you okay and that is the reason why it is not getting attracted towards the magnet clear till here yeah okay now we uh, we understood what is a magnetic field now how to find a magnetic field so next point is or next concept is finding magnetic fields okay so you can use a plotting compass or iron filings to detect a magnetic field okay now this is a short experiment like in order to find where will we uh, find the magnetic field what we can do is we can use a compass or iron filings iron filings are very small thin pieces of iron okay so uh, let's put a paper a uh, paper a uh, piece of paper over a magnet okay uh, this stops the iron filings sticking to the magnet so what we have done we have taken a bar magnet okay we took some iron filings which will attract the magnet and we can observe the magnetic field okay so we have a bar magnet we have iron filings okay we have a paper okay what we do is we sprinkle iron filings onto the paper okay we'll take a paper we'll add we'll put some iron filings onto the paper now what we'll do is we'll gently tap the paper okay so when you tap the paper the iron uh, filings which are there on the paper it spreads out okay it spreads out and then we'll observe our records okay so let's see what record we observe so you can see here okay iron filings show the magnetic field around the bar okay so the iron filings which we used helped us to show how exactly is the magnetic field there okay around the magnet so you can see there Uh, towards the pole you can see there is a uh, you know semi circular uh, field here towards the end that is towards the pole okay so this is a simple experiment where you can observe the magnetic field okay so here you can see again towards the pole there is a semi circle kind of thing we we'll, uh, we'll see what it does exactly later on but you can just see the changes this is an experimental part okay normally if you are there in the lab also they show you this take a piece of uh, you take a bar magnet you take some filings and you tap it once you tap it it spreads evenly okay and you also see that towards the end on the uh, north pole and south pole there are many there is a bunch of mag uh, iron filings okay reason we know that towards the end of the uh, that is towards the end of the magnet on the south pole and on north pole the magnetic field is the strongest and that's the reason why you have a bunch of filings around the north pole and south pole fine yeah so you can see here so this is what yeah. we have observed here in the previous diagram okay so this was experimentally done we are just observing now what exactly happened in this previous experiment okay so let's see so you can see this how exactly the lines the magnetic field are okay so it is starting from north pole and it is ending at south pole okay so you can see The, these are semi circular magnetic fields which starts from the north pole and ends at the south pole you can see the arrows yeah so drawing magnetic field diagrams okay so now what we are going to do we
saw what experimentally it looked like. Now, uh, from this experiment, we are going to draw a diagram. Okay. Now, from here, we don't come to know what exactly is the direction, whether it is going from South Pole to North Pole or North Pole to South Pole. That we don't know. But when we observe it diagrammatically, then we come, came to know that the field, you can see here, these arrow, the fields are from North Pole and it ends towards the South Pole. Okay. So, it would be difficult to draw the results from the experiment. Okay, so just looking at the experiment, this results, we cannot draw the diagram. But we have one already simplified diagram which will help us to write the results. So it would be difficult to draw the results from sort of experiment seen in the photograph. So we draw simple magnetic field lines instead. Okay, so this is a very simple diagram showing magnetic field. So remember, whenever you draw a magnetic field diagram, okay, remember, you have to show the arrows, okay? So you draw the semicircle towards the pole, starting from the North Pole and ending towards the South Pole. This is the direction of the magnetic line, okay? So you have to remember and you have to draw those accordingly. You have to show the arrows that it starts from the North Pole and it ends at the South Pole. This is very important. Fine? Clear till here? Yes. Okay. okay. Now, in the diagram, we have to now from this diagram, what do we come to know? Okay. As I told you, each field line has an arrow head onto it. So we have seen here, each line has an arrow showing the direction of the field. Okay. So the direction, the field lines come out of the north pole and go into the south pole. This I told you. According to the diagram, what you can see, there are fields. And the arrow shows that the uh, line comes out from the uh, North Pole and goes into the South Pole. This is the observation. The field lines are more concentrated at the poles. Okay. So you can see there are many lines here concentrated at the poles. Okay. And that is the reason why towards the pole, the magnetic field is the strongest because there are many lines, concentrated lines towards the poles. Okay. So when you draw this diagram manually onto the uh, paper, then also you can observe that towards the pole, there is a bunch of lines. And due to this, you observe that towards the poles, the magnetic field is the strongest. Okay. So the field lines are more concentrated at the poles. The magnetic field is strongest at the poles, where the field lines are most concentrated. Okay. That's the reason why towards the poles, the North Pole and South Pole, why the lines or why the field is most concentrated. Because it, the, if you draw the lines manually also, you will, uh, when you draw it, you will come to know that there are many lines towards the poles. Right? Yes. Okay. So now let's see what happens when we bring about two different magnets together. Okay. The field lines also show what happens to magnetic field of two magnets during attraction or repulsion. Okay, so we know this concepts opposite attracts and similar repels. Okay, so when you bring North Pole and North Pole together, it will repel. Okay, and when you, when you bring North Pole and South Pole together, it will attract. Now, the reason for this is we know that the magnetic line starts from North Pole and end to South Pole. Okay, so what happens when you bring two North Poles together? Both lines, both magnetic fields starts from the South Pole. Okay, there is no ending. Okay, so when two North Poles are brought together, both lines of magnetic field of this magnet as well as the other magnet starts from the North Pole. And that is the reason why North Pole and North Pole repel. Okay, and you bring about North Pole and South Pole. We know that the line, the direction of the magnetic field is from North Pole to South Pole. Okay, so when you start from North Pole, it will end at South Pole. Okay, and that is the reason why North Pole and South Pole attract. Fine, this is shown very clearly in this diagram. So you can see here we have brought together two magnets. Okay, so one magnet is having South Pole towards the end. And here uh, we are having south, uh, North Pole towards the end. You can see the line of direction of magnetic field. In the first magnet, we have observed that the direction starts from North Pole and is ending at South Pole. 
In the second magnet, also it is starting from north pole and ending at south pole. But at the middle, where the north pole of one magnet and south pole of the other magnet is coming together, the north pole lines are going exactly towards the south pole. And this attraction, force of attraction is stronger because north pole and south pole are very closer to each other. Okay, so the force, the lines are very nearer to each other. So you can see there is a whole concentrated lines here in the middle. When you bring one north pole and other south pole together. And that is the reason why the two magnets attract each other. Okay, so when you bring two uh, magnets together and its north pole and south pole together, you will observe that they both stick towards each other. That's the reason why... Uh, that uh, the reason is because of the force, the magnetic field lines, because magnetic lines starts from now north pole and ends at south pole. Is this clear to you? Sorry, can you please repeat? Yeah. Okay. So I was talking about the two magnets. Okay. What happens when you bring two magnets together? Now we have seen in the previous concept that. The lines of magnetic fields always starts from North Pole and ends at South Pole. Okay. So what happens when you bring about two North Poles together? One North Pole from this magnet and other North Pole from other magnet. What happens there? All Both the uh, magnetic lines are starting from North Pole. Okay. So both North Poles when come together, they repel each other. Okay. Because their lines are going towards the South Pole. Therefore, the same forces are coming towards each other and that's the reason why they repel each other. But when you bring north pole of one magnet and south pole of other magnet together, we know that the line of magnetic field starts from north pole and ends at south pole. So if you see here, when you bring north pole and south pole together, this part, you can see that the north pole and the south pole, the lines of attraction, the lines of a magnetic field are starting from North Pole and going towards the South Pole. So here, the distance is very low, very less. And that's the reason why you can see there are concentrated line of magnetic field. Okay. So when there are concentrated line of magnetic field, you can see there is a higher force of attraction. So that's the reason why when you bring North Pole and South Pole together, there is force of attraction. Okay, so this is the reason behind why North Pole, North Pole repel and why North Pole, South Pole attract. Clear with this now? Yeah. So field lines lead from one magnet to another when the magnets attract each other. So this was the example or this was a, you know, small uh, demonstration how, how uh, two magnets when come together, they will react each other. Yeah. Yeah. So as I explained you earlier, we in this diagram we brought one uh, the north pole of one magnet and the south pole of one ma uh, other magnet together, and you saw the direction was from north pole to south pole, and due to which both the magnets were attracted towards each other. Now there's one more diagram which will help you to demonstrate why north pole north pole repel. So you can see we know that. Not, uh, the lines of uh, magnetic field starts from North Pole and end at South Pole. So you can see when both North Poles are coming together, their lines are forcing them far away from each other. And that is the reason why when you bring about North Pole, North Pole together, they repel each other. Okay. So the field lines do not lead from one magnet to other where when the magnets repel each other. So the magnetic lines, the field lines are away from, going away from each other. So they are going from North Pole towards their South Pole. And for other magnet, the same thing, from North Pole to the South Pole. Okay. So their lines are going away from each other. And that's the reason why when you bring two North Poles together, they repel each other. Clear with these two concepts? Yeah. Now, this was an example about the magnet, okay? Now, talking about our earth, okay? There is a lot of magnetic field on the earth itself, okay? Now, how do you observe it and how do you feel the magnetic field? Let's see that. So, the earth's magnetic field, 
around 4000 years ago a greek shepherd called magnus was looking after his sheep this is a story or demonstration how he came to know about the magnetic field okay so the story of magnus says that iron nails in a shoe stuck to the other particular type of rock the rock was called as lodestone and contained a substance that was later named as magnetite which is naturally occurring magnet so what happened he was a shepherd okay he was rearing a sheep okay and uh, uh, suddenly what happened there was iron nails that was stuck into his shoes okay so what he did was to remove that iron nails from, from the shoes he held his leg on an rock so that he can remove those iron nails but what he observed that that the nails were attracted towards that rock okay later on it was found that that rock was known as lodestone okay and this lodestone was nothing but a, a you know a magnetite which has a lot of magnetic field and that's the reason why the nails from his shoes was attracted towards that rock okay so after doing many research it came to know that the lo lodestone is nothing but a magnet okay and later on it was named as magnetite okay and this magnetite rock was a naturally occurring magnet okay so this is how the concept of magnetic field or concept of magnet came into existence how people started knowing what is magnet understood this part yeah 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 okay okay so naturally occurring occurring means that uh, the meaning of naturally occurring we know okay so naturally occurring is something which is already present in the nature which is non not man made it is not made by man okay this is something a material which is already present in the nature we are just discovering it okay so as we said magnetite the rock was already present in the nature it was not made by man okay so uh, by when he was rearing a ship that time he discovered that there was something which has a force of attraction towards metal and that rock was magnetite rock a lodestone rock okay and this lodestone was naturally present it was a rock it was not made by humans okay so that is known as naturally occurring both the greek and chinese started to investigate magnetic properties okay once they come to know there is something which attracts metal okay after uh, the magnus after his experience he shared his experience with many people and after that people started researching more and more they started finding what exactly is this magnetic field okay so that time greeks and chinese they were having investigation about magnetic properties what is magnetic field why this rock attracts all the uh, metal particles they were very curious and they were very interested okay so they started investigating all the properties the chinese discovered that a small needle of lodestone split off the rock could be made to float on water okay so they later come to, came to know that if you made a needle of that lodestone okay and if you split the rock it could uh, that could float on water also okay so they used that lodestone as their reference for discovering and investigating magnetic properties and what they did was they made a needle out of that lodestone and that needle would float on water okay so when it allowed to float the needle of lodestone always turned towards the point or, or to uh, turn to a point in the same direction later on what they did was they came to know this property of floating okay so they come to know that the needle may which was made from lodestone rock it floats on water and when it floats on water it always always it is direct towards single direction okay so they were not aware of this properties which we what we call it as compass now okay so that was basically they were discovering that that time they were investigating the properties so that needle is made from lodestone rock which is a naturally uh, occurring rock okay and it floats on water and it always pointed towards the same direction so the chinese when they were investigating this concept they were they came to know by that time okay so okay. one kind of yeah are you understanding everything yeah i'm understanding okay okay thank you so one end of the needle pointed towards the north and other end pointed towards the south 
okay so later on when they uh, when they investigated more about it they were again curious ki why is it always uh, uh, it was pointed towards a single direction after more and more investigation then they came to know that one end of the needle is always pointed towards the north and other towards the south okay so this was the invention of magnetic compass okay so then they came to know that this we could use for getting the direction okay so when there was uh, when people used to go for you know uh, discovering different places they used to always carry this for this uh, reference of the direction okay because this needle which they uh, made from the load stone okay this needle always po pointed towards two direction one end was pointed towards the north and other was pointed towards the south and this they named it later on as magnetic compass okay it was soon discovered that the compass needle pointed to a position close to the earth's north pole but not exactly to the geographical uh, north pole okay so later on when they discovered they investigated more about it they came to know that this uh, needle of compass it always pointed towards the north but the north uh, the direction of north is the earth's north north pole okay and not exactly the geographic uh, geographic north pole Okay. it was always pointed towards the earth north pole overall the earth north pole okay the point is now called as magnetic north since it is always pointing towards the north which is the uh, nearest to the earth's north pole it is known as magnetic north clear till here yeah magnetic north moves very slowly and is currently in the arctic ocean north of alaska so now the magnetic uh, magnetic north which was named earlier it moves very slowly that uh, that point is moving very very slowly and now that point is towards the arctic ocean which is north of alaska it is in the north direction obviously but it is towards the alaska the invention of the compass was very important because it allowed people to navigate in places such as ocean and deserts okay so when people were on you know uh navigating okay so when they were discovering new things they were discovering new places okay that time they used to carry this compass because this compass always navigated them towards the direction to know the direction okay so they used to carry them everywhere whenever they went to deserts any or uh, new oceans or when they went for different excavations with the compass you will always know what direction you are facing okay so when you carry a compass you will always know which direction you are facing okay so even today with satellite navigation which is known as satnav ships and aeroplanes still use magnetic compasses okay so uh, now even if uh, our country our world is developing still when uh, any satellite is navigating when any ship is there in the ocean when uh, there are aeroplanes they always use this navigating uh, compass which is known as magnetic compass satellite navigation or satnav system do not use earth's magnetic field okay so satellite navigation they do not use earth's magnetic field okay but this magnetic compasses are used in ships in aeroplanes as well okay yeah so you can see this is the first compass which was discovered in 200 bce now yeah okay so the picture which you can see was the initial uh, compasses that were discovered earlier okay and the uh, and the needle which you can observe is made up of that load stone which we were talking about earlier which is known as magnetite okay so that okay. needle which is here which uh, it was made from that particular rock this was a very ancient uh, uh okay. previous compass nowadays you must have observed how compass looks like right yeah so you can see a compass there i don't i if you can observe it okay so uh, this is a part of a ship okay so when when a ship is sailing in the ocean we used to always fit a compass a big compass so there is a big compass installed in every ship to denote the location Okay, to denote which direction they are moving on to. They also sometimes require direction. They don't know exactly. Sometimes due to you know storms, different storm, the uh, ships are redirected due to the waves, heavy waves. 
so they always install the uh, magnetic compass okay to so that they are navigated towards the right direction okay yeah okay now uh, the earth's magnetism the earth behave as if it contains a giant magnet okay it produces magnetic field in which the field lines are most concentrated at the poles now as we know uh, about the bar magnet okay, we know that towards the poles the magnetic field is the most strongest okay, because there are concentrated lines magnetic fields towards the pole similarly our earth also have two poles if you have seen there is a north pole and there is a south pole right so the poles of our earth also act as a magnetic field which is stronger at the poles okay this magnetic field can be detected using magnetic materials or magnets this field you can detect which is present in the on the earth you can detect this using magnetic materials or magnets okay yes so talking yeah. about this you can see the direction is from north yeah. towards south right you can see the uh, north pole here and the south pole okay so remember the direction of the uh, poles the uh, uh, poles is always the magnetic lines are always from north pole to south pole okay so wherever the arrows you see it is going from this end to the other end so that means the north pole is this side and the south pole is on this side okay that's how the direction of magnetic field takes place okay now this is the modern compass the compass which we use now recently so the compass now the compass comprises of a magnetic needle which is mounted on a pivot okay a pivot is normally a, like a support okay a support which will help the magnetic needle to move around freely okay so a magnetic compass always has a pivot which is like a support which helps the magnetic needle to free to move freely then you have a dial like how you have a dial on your uh, watch similarly you have a dial on the compass now this dial is to denote which direction it is okay so there are different direction we have four main direction north south east and west also we have north east north west south east south west okay so all these eight directions are denoted or given on the dial of the compass okay so however the needle moves you can see which direction it is Okay, so this is the modern compass which we use, okay, which is used recently. So the north pole of the compass needle points towards the Earth north pole. Okay, so you can see the red, uh, the red part is the uh, towards uh, the north. Okay, so this north is basically not the north direction of your, like we have east west for your particular location, but this north pole is towards the Earth's north pole. So it will always direct you towards the Earth's north pole. Okay, so it always directs you towards the Earth's north pole. If the needle points towards the end on the dial, you know that the compass is pointing towards the north. This lets you navigate outdoors using a map. Okay, so this okay. also also helps you to navigate which direction you are going going to. Okay. Normally, it relocates itself to the north and south. But if you move, taking the compass, you will come to know you are uh, traveling to northwest, northeast, or whichever direction it is. Okay, and accordingly, you can travel. So now we have Google Maps. Okay, which helps us to nav navigate very easily and conveniently. But previously, compass were used a lot by the navigators because previously there were no not something which is Google Maps and all. So they used to carry this compass everywhere. yeah so in the north poles normally if you see in the uh, snowy region okay you can see a phenomena which is known as aurora have you heard about it no no so the uh, mm. uh, uh, you can see in the pictures the sky uh, has a certain you know hazy lines mm. which are normally of um, uh, fluorescent colors green fl fluorescent colors now this phenomena is known as aurora Okay, you can Google it later on to know more about it. Okay, so this phenomena, which is of aurora, it is caused due to Earth's magnetic field, and it is not ca uh, caused in this regions. It is normally caused in the northern poles. Okay, 
why in the nodal poles because the magnetic field starts from the north pole okay on the magnet also we have seen the magnetic field line starts from the north pole and ends at the south pole normally this uh, phenomena this lights we can observe in the northern part okay, in the snowy region towards the north okay so towards the north near antarctica and on yeah so there you can observe this phenomena in the sky it looks very beautiful Okay. this natural light display is caused due to the earth's magnetic field okay you can uh, see uh, there's uh, you can uh, if you interested in this you can uh, read about it later on and you can ask me later if you have any doubts about it okay yeah this is very interesting to observe the lights also there are uh, very beautiful videos and there are concepts also which are uh, explaining you the reason behind this beautiful light. it is known as earth's core uh, it is now known that the earth's core is the origin of the magnetic field but the scientists have still to discover the exact reason for this okay so we know that our earth acts as a magnet but the exact reason why it acts as a magnet is still not known okay so first initially scientists used to think that the magnetic lines evolved from the core the center of the earth but later on they come to know that it is not evolving from the center it evolves from the north pole and it is directed towards the south pole they think that heat generated in the core which is mostly made from iron causes it, causes it to continuously create a magnetic field okay so we know that our earth has different layers there is core there is crust there is mantle have you heard about this layers yeah yeah so the core is the most heated part it is the core now why it is called core because it is the innermost part of the earth so the temperature there is very very high so scientists used to think that ki since the temperature there is uh, at that core point is high that field generates a magnetic field due to that particular temperature uh, a lot of uh, magnetic field is generated because iron or other metals are also found towards the core of the earth okay so when you know there is an excavation or you know uh, uh, what metals are been found most of the metals are found in the core of the earth so they used to think that in the core there are lots of metal like iron aluminum and um, aluminum ore that is bauxite etc okay so they used to think that due to this metal uh, maybe there are presence of magnetic field the core also contains some nickel which is another magnetic metal okay so later on they also found that the core also contain all the magnetic materials such as iron nickel which is also magnetic material the movement of liquid outer core would explain why the magnetic poles move slowly and have occasionally reversed okay so in a bar magnet the magnetic poles are fixed okay but on our earth okay we know that the towards the uh, upper side is the south pole and towards the uh, lower side is the north pole okay but the problem here is ki the points keep on moving very very slowly and magnetic north moves at a speed of 60 km per year the pole okay from which the uh, lines the magnetic field has been generated it is moving slowly slowly it is moving Uh, at a speed of 60 km per year so per year the point is shifted 60 km every year yeah so this is uh, just a uh, in a piece of information where you know there are airport runways which are numbered according to the direction of the magnetic north the num uh, the numbers sometimes have to be changed due to the movement of the magnetic north okay the countries which are there towards the north okay they used to change the runways why because of the concept that the north pole is moving every year 60 kilometers and that is the reason why the countries which are there towards the north north pole towards the north pole they used to shift their runways okay they they used to shift their uh, you know runways for uh, taking off the airplanes because of the north pole that is always shifting Okay, every year by sixty kilometers. Okay, so they used to uh, uh, shift their uh, runways every time. Okay, now the, there's a new concept which is called as electromagnets. Okay, so uh, 
till your everything is clear to you yeah yeah okay okay so let's see what are electromagnets okay now uh, before starting let's see what are the magnetic materials properties of a magnetic material when will you call this material as a magnetic material okay so a material is described as magnetic if it is attracted to a magnet so any material that is attracted towards the magnet is known as a magnetic material so normally you must have seen iron attracts towards magnet steel nickel okay so all these metals attract towards the magnet so they are known as magnetic material so any material that attracts towards the magnet is known as a magnetic material magnetic material include metals like iron nickel and cobalt steel is another common magnetic metal steel is a mixture that contains a large proportion of iron okay so steel is normally uh, 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 stainless steel is an alloy right whereas steel is also a mixture of iron in different proportion so steel also has iron in it okay and that's the reason why it is acting as a magnetic material magnetic materials can be magnetized means magnetize means converting uh, it into a magnet that is known as magnetized when you convert any material into a magnet you uh, say it it is magnetized okay so magnetized means turned into a magnet converting a material into a magnet is known as magnetized the magnets you have used were all made by magnetizing magnetic material so the magnets which we are using now are also magnetized to act as a magnet okay so they are not natural magnets they are magnetized they are converted to a magnetic material okay so the magnets you are using are called as permanent magnets because they have a magnetic field that is always there okay so the magnets which we use okay, for experimental purpose for different purposes are permanent magnets because every time you observe their field magnetic field is there always permanently there and that's the reason why they are known as permanent magnets because their magnetic field is constant it is there always you cannot switch the magnetic field on and off okay so if you take a magnet okay you cannot switch on or off the magnetic field because the magnetic field is continuously present there you cannot uh, change the field according to your convenience okay that's the reason that magnets are known as permanent magnets you cannot change the fields one way to magnetize the magnetic material is by using electricity okay so those are permanent magnets but if you want to change a material into magnetic field or into a magnetic material you can change them by using electricity okay so when this method is used the magnet is known as electromagnet so when you use electricity to change a magnet uh, to a magnetic material that method or that uh, that thing is called as electromagnet Okay, when you use electricity to change it into a magnet, okay, so that are known as electromagnets. Now let's see what are electromagnets. So an electromagnet is made by wrapping a wire around a magnetic material such as iron. Okay, so an electromagnet is made by what? It is made by wrapping. Okay, it is wrapped with a wire around a magnetic material. so which is a magnetic material uh, it is iron nickel cobalt so any material for example iron so when you wrap a wire around an iron okay it is uh, and uh, you uh, you know exposes to electricity okay it can be called as electromagnet the wire that is wrapped around is known as coil okay so the wire which is wrapped around that piece of iron it is known as a coil the material in the middle of the coil is the core okay so inside the coil whatever material you are using it will act as a core so it is called as a core since it is a middle it is the inner portion so it is called as a core now what happens you will expose this to electric current so when current passes through the coil the magnetic material becomes magnetized okay so what happens what you have uh, taken you have taken an iron which is a magnetic material because iron gets attracted towards the magnet hence it is called as magnetic material so you have taken a piece of iron you have wrapped a wire 
around that iron piece now you are exposing that iron wrapped iron towards the uh, exposing it towards electricity so when current is passed through the coil the magnetic material becomes magnetized okay so due to this electricity the iron which is now being magnetized it is being converted to magnet so when the current is switched off the magnetic material loses most of its magnetism the uh, uh, there's one diagram which will helps to demonstrate this okay so when you switch off the current the uh, material uh, the electromagnet will not act as a magnet now when you again switch on the current it will again act as a magnet clear till here are you understanding this part now can you please repeat yes yes okay now we are discussing about electromagnets okay so electromagnets are nothing but they are magnetized that means they are being converted into magnets now we are going to see how they are being converted into magnets for that we are taking an experiment okay we are taking an example so we take a magnetic material so what is a magnetic material any material that gets attracted towards a magnet is known as a magnetic material for example you take an iron now what i do is i wrap that piece of iron with a wire okay so that wire is now called as a coil okay so what i did is i took a piece of iron i wrapped that iron piece with a wire now i passed current through that iron uh, through that wire which is known as a coil okay what i did is i took a iron piece i wrapped the iron piece with a, a wire which is called as a coil and i passed electric current through the coil now once i pass the electric current toward uh, through the coil this uh, whole uh, material will now act as a magnet okay because it has been magnetized with the help of electricity we had converted that piece of iron into a magnet when you switch on the electricity when you switch on the switch okay electricity is passed and this iron is now converted as a magnet and it is converted with the help of electricity hence it is known as electromagnet did you understand now <coughs> yeah yeah so it is converted to electromagnet now the main advantage of this electromagnet is you can on and off as your convenience if you want it to act as a electro it act as a magnet you can on the switch when you on the switch the current is passed through the coil and this mag uh, this iron will act as a magnet it will starts producing magnetic field if you don't want it to produce magnetic field you will switch off the switch okay when you switch the switch off what happens the uh, electricity current is not passed and when it is not passed it will not act as a magnet okay this whole thing is known as an electromagnet understood okay yeah okay so we have this diagram here so you can see this is an iron nail here okay so we have wrapped a wire okay around the nail and we are passing current towards this wire which is known as a coil coiled wire so when you pass the current uh, through the wire okay the iron acts as a magnet okay and this whole thing is known as an electromagnet why because iron is converted to magnet with the help of electricity hence it is known as electromagnet is it clear yeah is this part clear to you yeah okay okay so let's revise quickly what we have done today what all things we have uh, discussed today can you tell me one by one uh, magnetic field and electromagnets yeah okay so what about uh, magnets what uh, different things have you studied about magnet um properties yeah properties of magnet we have seen then uh, uh, how uh, what are what is the difference between uh, what is the concept when we uh, bring two uh, north pole and north pole together what happens yeah yes when we bring two north pole together what happens 
Um, it uh, repels. It repels. And what about North Pole and South Pole when it comes together? It attracts. It attracts. Yes. Then we also saw the concept of compass, electromagnetic compass, right? So electromagnetic compass, the needle which was first invented, it was made from a rock which is lodestone. Is also known as magnetite, right? Then after that, we came to a phenomena which is known as aurora. Aurora is normally observed in the northern regions in Alaska, okay? And these uh, phenomena is a result of magnetic fields. Okay? After that, we came to a concept which is known as electromagnets. We studied what is electromagnet. Yes. So whenever a magnet, a magnetic material is converted to magnet or it is magnetized to magnet with the help of electricity, it is known as electromagnet. Clear till you all?